I remember once sitting in a train station in Edinburgh and as I was simply sitting there resting for a few moments within my own space I saw a family ahead of me a man maybe in his mid-thirties a woman, a mother, a young child but my focus rested on the guy and I've had it my, I had a very strong experience of what I would call compassion. I really felt aware of his struggle in life, not in a sentimental way, not at all in a judgmental way. Thoughts were not racing through my mind, going in different directions about what I could do to help him or to save him in some particular way. But I felt a profound experience of compassion. And compassion is what I want to talk about in this short uh, offering, contemplation, teaching, call it what you like, even rambling. <laughs> if you'd like to use that label for what I'm offering and part of the reason I want to talk about compassion is that I on a personal level want to experience compassion more I want to feel the flow of compassion move more freely in my mind I want it to arise more um frequently in consciousness because I'm aware I'm aware I feel in, the, in some ways that although compassion could potentially be a very ground sort of normal part of human existence it's in a way quite infrequent and although in our modern western culture or just the modern world in general we can be very compassionate culture do all sorts of things to provide support for people in need so in a way there's something though missing something that stops us from really feeling uh, compassion within ourselves for others so let's in this short offering explore that a little bit and try to get underneath that and offer some perspectives that might help us to feel compassion more often in our lives and why we might want to do that. And I think that we don't have to, but I think that can be useful to say, to turn to a tradition like Buddhism, the Buddha Dharma, to explore a little bit about what compassion is all about. So technically compassion, especially within the Mahayana tradition, is the, the meeting of suffering, but from a place of loving kindness. So it's kind of like you need to have strong, sort of embedded, rich flow of what in the Buddha tradition would be called metta, is the Pali word or Maitri Sanskrit flow of the metta, the loving kindness within yourself and then when this loving kindness meets someone it could be yourself, it could be an animal it could be a spirit, it could be a plant it could be a tree even that loving kindness meets something that's in a state of suffering or struggle in some way struggle is probably a good way of talking about it there is that emergence of compassion or what in Sanskrit would be karuna karuna and it's a beautiful thing to experience 
it's very much at the heart, I would say, of the, of the, of of humanity itself. In a way, we, there's this movement towards experiencing the world in a more, you could say, elevated way, uh, even transcendent way. And as soon as I start to use the words elevated way or transcendent way, I know that some of you, maybe not all of you, but some of you may have some stories around that. Sometimes people have stories around things like transcendence, like, oh, you know, that's somehow hierarchical or doesn't include enough, doesn't accept enough to talk about transcendence or, you know, all of this talk over the last few thousand years in religious traditions to do with heaven and transcendence and the spiritual world is somehow a cop-out or an escape. It's just a form of escapism, Tom. What you need to be is just, you know, just accept the bare bones of human experience and get on with things. And there is a story within secular culture as well about that, that, you know, that what we just need to do is accept that all there is is, is is the world and I suppose in the 60s it was almost given a positive almost spiritual stance by people like um, John Lennon isn't it in that song um, imagine imagine <laughs> imagine there's no heaven imagine above you's only sky you know that kind of idea and and there is a beauty in that but there's a there's also something uh ignorant I would say ignorant because it doesn't it doesn't embrace the beauty or the transcendence the, the transcendence the beautifully transcendent process that can happen when people connect more to transcendence because I think I've got like this inkling I, I really believe this that the mo the people that embrace transcendence in the most skillful way and I will say it needs to be done skillfully finally become the most embodied people very much the most embodied people are often the people that have embraced transcendence but that's in a way a bitter a bitter pill to swallow now i'm going to say this quite clearly and it needs to be clearly stated and i think listened to and recognized and that is that whether we like it or not Compassion is only possible through the transcendence of desire. And I don't know if you noticed, but I needed to edit out a little sneeze then. It's almost like you can't say such things without there being a response. Oh, I can't say that. In this modern culture, talk about the transformation of desire. You know, that just comes from a lack, a lack culture of where we're, you know, what we need to do is just focus on abundance. And, you know, just, you know, the, the desires for life and the thirst for experience and all these things. And, yeah, there's something wonderful about that. Yeah, yearning for life, experience. But at the end of the day, at least in my book, and maybe it's a limited book, but I'm happy with a sense of some limitations. We need to work on ourselves. We need to work on our desires. We need to transform habit energies within ourselves that aren't serving us or anyone. We work on our de desires. We work on our unskillful habits would be a good way of just talking about desires of body, speech and mind to the point that then loving kindness emerges because loving kindness as the great late Thich Nhat Hanh would often point out is very much the brother or the sister of understanding. It's not sentimental love that we're really trying to move towards. It's the love that has the sort of the strength, the shining light of understanding as well. And when there's understanding, there's the wisdom, the seeing, seeing clearly. Because the thing about desires is they, unskillful ones, they distort our perception. Uh, and th with, our, with our perception distorted, it's impossible really to experience compassion because we're not coming from a space of stillness or balance, composure, integration. It's always the story, it's the judgment, it's the even if you experience the other person, yeah, they're suffering, it becomes the story. 
if we've not really worked on ourselves, it becomes the stuff really, suffer, the story of, inter, of 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 just thinking about them in an intellectual way. How how bad they look, or in such a st- terrible state. But it's on the level of the thinking mind. We want to move it on the level of the heart mind, or what in Buddhism we could sometimes refer to as the chitta, heart mind. But you know, chitta is also a word that's used within the ancient yogic tradition of India, and it's just really sometimes just pointing to this faculty of mind, just the mind, just but the heart mind, not just the thinking mind, consciousness mind within our experience. This is what we need to do because when we uh, we we need to always remember that it's the internal experience that then creates external reality. It's what we are within that then gets projected out in terms of our experience very much. Uh, I'm not saying the external world doesn't exist. We don't even need to go down that route of inquiry necessarily. It's just about the recognition that we are within this perceptual field and that perceptual field that each of you are in is very much dependent upon you. You're the main, in a way, factor at work, at play. So it's then it's the ground to work on, and we, when we work on that ground, then the compassion can arise. And in a way, we need to have a passion uh, for the compassion, like a passion for it, not just like, talking about it. And even when I'm talking about it, there's a, there's a danger it becomes too much like a dry, oh, you know, Tom's just kind of like cleverly explaining in a slightly persuasive way why we might, why we might want to get into these other perspective. It work, but I think it is useful to, to, to dwell upon that point that compassion arises through the transformation desire, because otherwise we can spend so long, like in our spiritual lives, trying to feel things for others, trying to feel more empathy, trying to feel more compassion, and we can try so hard, <laughs> but be so frustrated because we're not experiencing it, because we've forgotten like this perennial teaching of all the world's spiritual traditions very much that it's the the transformation of our stuff the transformation of the desires for external things that we think we need or we want you got to you got to transform that stuff and then the emergence of the compassionate heart can begin to arise within us